Hello, I'm Robin Aldroyd, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk. Today I'm going to have a chat with um, Stuart and Jordan from Ford, who are involved in the Car Design News live stream back in May. Uh, they've been using Autodesk v Road Professional to collaborate in design reviews across you know, many geographical locations. And they took the audience through a design review based on the Ford Zilla projects that Ford are doing um, using VRED VR um, with VRED Prof Professional. The Ford team walked through the design review process in a virtual world, and um, that was streamed live to the audience. And they explored the different design details from within the scene, um, showing you know how they do a design review nowadays in a virtual world. You know, we're going to have a quick look with um, Stuart and Jordan about how this has changed over time, you know, what the design process used to be like, um, what's involved in setting up a design review session, um, how they did it and the practical day-to-day -day things. You know, and look at some of the things that have changed over time, including the COVID situation, how that's increased the different technologies. So I'm happy to introduce you to Stuart Robinson and Jordan Beckley from Ford. Gents, if you could maybe just give a quick introduction to yourselves. Hello, I'm Stuart Robinson. I'm the Concept CAD and Visualisation Supervisor for Europe for Ford. Um, I'm based in Dunton in the UK, but my team is split 50-50 between uh, here and Germany in Mökenisch. Yeah, I'm uh, Joran Beckley. I'm with uh, Ford Design in Dearborn, Michigan, part of Studio 2000X, where I do uh, global training um, on software and processes and also project management of new tools and technology. Great, thanks. So I just want to, you know, get a little bit of context to it on, you know, the design review process, you know, how it's changed and evolved and, you know, how it used to be um, back in, I suppose, the good old days. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, uh, many, uh, many years ago, it would be um, uh, based uh, around a, a clay model. Uh, a discussion on uh, the paper sketches and and the clay model. Obviously, we'd moved uh, moved forward a lot. With um, uh, a lot of reviews were done um, still with with the with the clay models, uh, backed up by by power wall reviews, uh, looking at work that had been done in Photoshop and CAD. Uh, but over the past uh, past couple of years. Um, uh, uh, virtual realities come in and um, a lot more um, realistic renderings um, on, on the power wall or uh, other display solutions. Um, and the, um, the, the, the virtual world and the, um, the, the CAD reviews have, uh, have really helped to um, reduce costs and spe speed, up, uh, speed up the process. That's um, that's good background. So, um, what has led you to start doing VR digital design reviews? You know, what made you switch to VR collaboration, and what was the catalyst before COVID um, to to move into this this side of things? I think we'd uh, we'd picked up the tools as a um, uh, an exciting looking thing to try out with, uh, possibly to start with without. Uh, uh, an idea how they how would they they could improve our process. Um, so uh, we we realised straight away um, how we can review a vehicle with a, a, a VR headset on. And um, from the first time we used it, um, it was it was just uh, before a, a mill slot we had ready for a, a CAD model. We we reviewed in VR and uh, we realised it it wasn't actually worth milling because there was there was a problem with the the way the vehicle looked from a certain angle, and so um, so we didn't mill it. So in fact, we actually saved you know from one use we saved um, saved a fair fair bit of money and um, uh, realised how how that that would Im uh, impact the process going further on and we um we were starting to to uh to pick it up in in all the studios uh but not uh not not fully implement it in in every version of of the process um and i think um as we've uh as we had to earlier this year move uh to a remote working um it's it became invaluable at that point 
John, have you you've got any perspective from your side of the business? Yeah, no. So working uh, closely with all the design management and directors, we've been implementing collaboration with VR for the past few years um, to stay in touch with all the global studios um, and holding uh, really early morning, really late night reviews um, so the management can not have to physically be on site and still participate in the design process uh, with our global teams and even within studios without having to travel in the cold of Michigan winter to the other side of campus to participate in a review. We can all join from the comfort of our desks and now our homes uh, to really see and evaluate the design and multiple design themes and just yeah visualize uh, a little bit more than you'd get out of a traditional clay model with the addition of animations and interactive components, things like that. Great, great. So, um... We saw the design directors, you know, in the car design news webinar, you know, um, just, you know, maybe you can give a flavor of how often this is done, you know, how many sites are involved sometimes and the type of people that get involved in the actual review review process. Yeah, I think um, it's used in all um, in all scenarios, really. Um, from from daily review within within the team uh, to um, a review with a chief designer um, and and uh, and then a review uh, with collaboration um, with uh, higher design management across across sites. So in in, in Europe, there's uh, two studios and uh, some external partners, and um, there's. Uh, um, it's sort of a, a, a on demand if it's 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 not uh, not yet a, a regular timed thing but on demand will um, uh, will set up a review for whoever needs to be there and then um, maybe uh, bi monthly or so, or so we'd um, we'd involve uh, we'd be invited to you know a, a global um, design discussion using these techniques. So how does it come across from the US, um, Jordan? Is this a similar kind of thing? Are you using it a lot, a lot of the time? Yeah, uh, I would say before, um, yeah, we all start working from home. It was more ad hoc as Stu was uh, describing, but yeah, now that yeah, all of our teams are working remotely, uh, there have been set weekly reviews for all of our major programs. So set cadences with design directors and chiefs and the design teams all participating. Um, in these collaborative reviews to go over the latest um, data. So let's um, just take a look at, you know, some of the technology behind this. Obviously, you know, you're using Autodesk V-Red's uh, professional software for the design reviews, but, um, you know, how that's how that configured? What kind of um, workstations and, you know, is there big variations worldwide? So, yeah, obviously we are, we are using V-Red to review and it is our main uh, V-Red or VR review tool um, for higher end presentations. And that's being enabled by uh, Dell workstations that we have uh, available to a lot of our design team. We have over probably 40 um, VR systems sent out globally now and 40 enabled users that weren't uh, able to participate in reviews before. Um, and across workstations, laptops, everyone has different hardware. Um, there's a few different models of headsets out there. So, you know, obviously everybody's probably thinking this is a very complicated process, but Jordan, maybe you could just explain how you get a scene or a, a data set ready for a design review. You know, where do people start? How long does it take? And, you know, do you use templates and libraries for this kind of thing? Yeah, so part of what our, our 2000X team does is create a, a global standard template with uh, specific environments that our design management likes to review in. Um, and that's different between program, different between Ford and Lincoln and, and our global studios. Um, and a series of set materials um, that might be standardized earlier in the process and more vehicle specific later on. Um, but yeah, that enables users to drag and drop files. VRED's a big part of our visualization process. So oftentimes designers, our color and material teams will have models ready to go. Um, that we can update to the latest data and then quickly review um, in a matter of 
you know, minutes, hours to be able to jump from data in CAD to a high-end visualization review. Yeah, I think um, we talked about the the process in the past, and uh, uh, there was there was a, a lot of the teams doing their own um, building their own scenes uh, successfully, but all all in their own styles. And I think the the work that Two Thousand X has done to um, to build a scene that uh, can be sent out to anyone uh, is great. We've um, uh, people can take that and use it as a base and um, uh, build the most uh, whatever realism level of scene that they need. But uh, at its basic level, you can just drop your model in and review it in VR. So it's been good. So we've talked about the different technologies and things, but you know, there's obviously a human element to this. Um, how long does it take people to grasp the technology? And you know, do you find you know some people learn it more easily than others? And then how do they react? I know that you know as we tour around showing people our technology and how it works, there's sometimes a, a reluctance to to use the put the headset on even. Yeah, it's. Um... Certainly, in my experience, it, it varies uh, greatly. Some will take quite uh, a lot of coaxing, and they'll need to see it um, see it working well uh, first. But others just can't wait to get uh, can't wait to get in, involved. Um, but the um, with the newer equipment and the higher frame rates, uh, we're uh, we're not really sort of getting a, a bad experience now. There was, uh, you know, initially. Uh, the way VR made people feel, um, there was there was a you know a couple of negative comments here and there, but um, I think we've we've overcome that. Yeah, we we always aim for the best experience possible, and that's what that template enables us to do. Um, yeah, we put hundreds, thousands of people um, through VR um, from the design side. Um, yeah, everyone from bring your children to work day all the way up to the the CEO and outside partners. Um, and yeah, I've had very, very few negative experiences. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, um, the, the first experience is a really important one. So, you know, the first experience is always going to be a good one. So um, the, obviously the Car Design News webinar is you know, what prompted this, this, this discussion and conversation. Um, I can imagine that that wasn't um, a without stress of event, but I, I suppose design reviews aren't, you know, simple, straightforward things. But, uh, you know, are there any things that have happened since that Car Design News webinar that, you know, and the COVID situation that have kind of changed the adoption, you know, things that have just happened, you know, that have been a surprise or anything? The, uh, I, th I think, uh, not surprise mainly, but maybe uh, more, um, how how we thought uh, thought thought this process should go. Um, that's that's kind of how it is going now. Um, the uh, the actual scene we used in the car design news event has been uh, repeatedly used since, and um, similar scenes made. Um, so we, we ran that event uh, as as a real design review, and um, others have followed that have that have followed a similar similar format and. Um, uh, we've gained uh, positive, um, useful data from those uh, from those events that forward the designs that we were actually working on. Yeah, no, I would say the the car design news webinar wasn't a, a one off thing. It was just inviting the rest of the design community into our current process and allowing them to you know, be over the shoulder, be part of the review, and that's yeah, just expanded more and yeah, you know, it's been our normal process for a while and it definitely will continue um so i think jordan you, you mentioned some numbers early on um have you had you know more people using the software since the car design news is that 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 webinar actually helped break down any barriers and or make it just more um, relevant to people because they can see see its use uh, I, I don't think the, the webinar in particular spurred anything but yeah we pivoted very quickly back in march to get you know, over 40 people set up at home, um, working remotely with uh, VR capabilities. And yeah, it was a, a big push um, from the very beginning to get everyone up to speed and uh, confident in their own abilities. Uh, during a normal on-site review, there was always someone um, there to help the directors and everyone get into VR and make sure it was running properly. Now that everyone's at home, it is a little bit more on yeah, the individual teams to step up and make sure that the experience is just as great as we would be having in a more controlled environment. 
And I, I think yeah, everyone has embraced the technology a lot more. Yeah, I think we've also got uh, uh, more people who are, are um, uh, champions or experts in, in, in it. So there's uh, the team knows who, who to contact if they're if they're starting to, to struggle to, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a few names within the team that they, uh, they always fall back on. So, Stuart, maybe you could, um, you know, just answer a question that we always get asked. Um, you know, we always get asked if clay is going away, you know, and is it going to get removed from the process? Maybe you can just um, give us a bit of insight on that from your point of view. Going from a uh, clay modeling background, um, I always uh, would have said uh, you, you can't get rid of uh, the clay models. Um, there's there's certainly always going to be uh, space for physical models, um, but I think as uh, as the younger generation come through this industry, who've grown up with the uh, the virtual tools, um, yeah, you you um, the que the answer to that question might become different um, sooner than we think. Yeah. So actually, on on those you know that next generation. You know, it's always good to offer some advice to people trying to get into the different industries, car design specifically, you know, a lot of people out there trying to get into car design in different ways. Um, have you both got any advice specifically for people trying to get into the car design world or even into a, a normal job? You know, it's going to be more pressing nowadays with uh, the COVID changes and things, but any advice to pe young people? Yeah, I think uh, uh, make the most of, um, of where you're at. Um, while you're a student, you've got all the um, cheap or free licenses. Um, it's the ideal time to, to learn uh, uh, any, any software that you, you think you may use. Um, there's, um, as we said, we're, we're transforming into a more digital, uh, digital industry. Um, uh, don't forget the roots, but certainly uh, there's there's plenty to concentrate on there. Yeah, no, as uh, coming out of school recently myself, um, it's definitely important to stay abreast of all the new technology and as Stu was saying, make use of it while you have it for cheap or free. Um, but don't write anything off. Look at other industries, look at architecture, fashion design, see what they're doing to advance um, as well and how you can incorporate that into uh, vehicle transportation design. Um, there's definitely a lot of new advancements in hardware that, that's going to change how we work with real time ray tracing and, and faster um, yeah, visualization and different modeling strategies that we can do parametrically, um, things like that, that really are going to change the way that you know, design works moving forward. Very good. So thanks a lot, gentlemen, for, for your time. Um, I know this is a tricky thing to do. Um, obviously, uh, doing this uh, on a Zoom meeting is, is sometimes not the best, but I think we've uh, we got there eventually. So thanks a lot for your time, and thanks for uh, telling about us about what you've done and how things have gone. Yeah, thank All you. right. Thank you.